All right. Um, so hello, everyone, um, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Um, as Anne said, my name is Jessica Rothheiser. I'm a training specialist with WorldBook. Um, I'm really excited to be with you today. I'm just going to kind of go through WorldBook, do a little bit of an overview of what resources are available to you here, uh, show some cool or unexpected features throughout, um, and then anything that's helping, uh, that will be helpful with parents in, in supplementing um, like school with COVID, you know, it's sometimes uh, some people are doing homeschooling, some schools are in person, but might move to remote, a lot of moving parts. So just ways that WorldBook can help with all of that. So um, we're gonna just, like I said, do an overview of the databases that you have access to um, so that you would be able to help uh, students or parents choose a database or features within those uh, that kind of best suit their needs, what, what they um, need for, for school or if they wanna learn outside of school, uh, those kinds of things. As I also mentioned, uh, cool unexpected features within the databases, uh, being able to answer common questions that you may get uh, with the World Book resources and features. Um, and then I'll show you the World Book training guide where you can find tons of great support, promotional materials, uh, how to articles, tutorial videos, um, are more of that support aspect. And then promotional materials, there's lesson ideas, there's bookmarks, flyers, social media posts, lots of uh, great resources there. So I'll show you that uh, towards the end as well. So I'm gonna start with access. Um, I know that you are all, all around the world. Uh, so this is going to be probably the easiest way for everybody to access, um, gives students, uh, all users, remote access as well. So whether they're you know, on base, in person, in school, whatever, or if they're at home, uh, this login ID and password is going to be the easiest way for everybody to just access all these databases. So there's the login ID, the password are the same, which makes it uh, extra easy to remember those credentials and, and get logged in. Once you log in, you're going to be taken to what we call our World Book Super homepage, where you're going to find all of the products in your subscription. Uh, for you all, that is nine products, as you're seeing here on the screen. Uh, these ones in the top kind of U shape up here are more uh, what we would consider our core databases, uh, more research driven, uh, you know, searching, finding articles, things like that. Uh, and these are progressive. So it's particularly these three kids, student advanced. It's going to be your elementary, middle and high school and beyond uh, resources. Um, particularly those three are structured very similarly. The tools that are available, the way an article is laid out, how you perform a search, all of that remains the same. Uh, the content will then vary uh, within the databases. But the idea of that is to really make it easy for students. You know, once they, if they use kids in elementary school, they don't have to learn a completely new database for middle school, a completely new database for high school. They're gonna see familiar features they're going to be able to navigate uh, in very similar or if not the same ways that they did um, on the other databases. Uh, the bottom row here are kind of what we call our supplemental resources then. So you have ebooks, which is our kind of digital library, great for all ages. Timelines is a visual representation of history. Uh, this is going to be good for kind of upper elementary and beyond. Activity Corner is, uh, we like to refer to it kind of as an educational Pinterest. Uh, so you'll be able to find tons of activities on there for all ages. Uh, you know, parents are looking for things to do with their kids at home, uh, particularly if COVID sends kids back home, um, like last school year, you know, parents are gonna be looking for more things to do with their students at home. And those are activities with relatively easy materials lists. Uh, things that people might have laying around the house or can easily get. Uh, and so that's a great resource for that kind of activity. And then dramatic learning is kind of a reader's theater. There are 42 uh, plays on that site, as well as 
lesson plans, activities, projects to go along with those plays. So rather than just providing the play, you're really getting a well-rounded kind of full unit uh, that crosses the curriculum in, in a lot of different ways to go along with that play. Uh, so really great resource there as well. Um, I'm going to send in the chat uh, at the end the link to this presentation. Um, I'm not going to go through and stay on the presentation the whole time, but each one of these products has a description slide, some screenshots, some more uh, bullet point details about each of those. Uh, so if you wanted to refer back to that later, uh, all of that is there. But as I mentioned, I don't want to spend all the time on the presentation here. I do want to take you live into uh, the databases and show you some of those features. So this will be, uh, I'll send that to you uh, kind of after. And then these cool features as well. Um, I'm going to go through these live, uh, but you can refer back to things that I'm going to go over uh, here in the presentation. So actually, I'll finish, I'll finish off this section of the presentation. So um, kind of third objective I had on that slide was answering common questions you might get from uh, parents or students or, or kind of common needs that students are coming to you or, or to a library for. Oops, okay. <laughs> uh, so one question you might get a lot is a student needs to do a research project. They need to research a specific topic. They're working on a homework assignment. They need to look up the answer to a homework assignment. Uh, which database should I go to? Uh, this one's pretty straightforward in that the super homepage of WorldBook has the suggested grade levels on it, uh, but you're going to be looking to those core databases I was mentioning, Early Learning Kids, Student Advanced, um, and then again, depending on those grade levels. So if you have your, you know, your early learners, early readers, pre-K, kindergarten will go to early learning, elementary will go to WorldBook Kids, middle school WorldBook student, and high school will go into advanced. And then you also have eBooks at Digital Library, which has texts for all ages. Uh, within eBooks, uh, we'll try to pop in there for a couple minutes today, but um, you'll find books for all sorts of topics. So books for fun, as well as more textbook style, uh, you know, nonfiction kind of books as well. So lots of different purposes for going to eBooks, uh, but could definitely support in this aspect as well um, in research or in looking up the answer uh, for, for homework. Another question you might get uh, or a need that students might have is keeping all of their sources organized for papers, reports, projects. Um, you know, if, if any teachers come to you as well, like how, how can I help my students stay organized? Do you have any, any tools for that? Uh, we do have tools for that. Lots of different ones embedded right into uh, these databases. So we have a tool called My Research, which acts as a virtual backpack where students can save uh, all types of content into various project folders. Also really great for um, educators, librarians that want to uh, compile resources for a unit that they're teaching. You know, if parents are homeschooling, um, they're teaching a specific unit subject area, they can find resources save those, come back to those at any time as well. Uh, so that tool you're going to find on WorldBook Student and Advanced. Uh, you know, we found that middle and high school students tend to be the ones that need more resources, more sources for research projects. Uh, so that is uh, provided for that age level. Um, you'll also find a citation builder on those two databases, uh, as well as WorldBook Discover, uh, where students can cite external sources. So all of the world book content is going to have citations uh, already built into them. Uh, really easy for, for students to find those. Uh, but any external sources they're using, books, websites, interviews, newspapers, podcasts, whatever, you can cite those um, using world book citation builder. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of citation builders out there that operate very similarly. Uh, so the benefit of doing that then within WorldBook is you're, you can also save your citations to those My Research projects, so to the, that virtual backpack into your project folders. And again, uh, another organizational piece to really help students. Uh, you also have resource guides on WorldBook Student. Uh, these are going to be 
world book compiled uh, lists of sources, uh, you know, potential uh, print books that students can read um, all on the same topic. So a great place for students as a kind of a jumping off point. Uh, you know, they're starting a research project, they're not sure where to start, they can find a resource guide on that topic uh, and then click into related links uh, that they can use for research. Similarly, on Pathfinders, uh, Pathfinders is a tool where uh, students or educators can kind of create their own resource guides. Uh, so it works very similarly to my research, but then it's shareable. Um, so Pathfinders is a really great tool for educators, particularly that want to compile resources for their students. So they can go through, um, you know, find articles, find maps, images, videos, anything that's on WorldBook, and then send that Pathfinder out to their students. Uh, so it's kind of a customized resource guide. So the main difference here is resource guides, WorldBook created, Pathfinders would then be educator created. And then lastly, uh, any article kids, student advanced also discover uh, can be saved to uh, Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive. Uh, so if those are either, uh, either of those are something a student uses uh, either in school or on their own, uh, you can easily save to those as well. So lots of organizational supports built in and, and we'll go in and look uh, at these databases in just a minute. Um, big one, again, as I mentioned, you know, if, if COVID shuts down schools again, which fingers crossed that it doesn't, but you never know, <laughs> um, where can you, parents find activities uh, or ideas for activities to do at home uh, with their kids. So there's tons of resources here. I mentioned some of them on that first slide, um, but again, we're gonna look at a couple of these as we go into the databases in a few minutes. Uh, but activities, science projects in World Book Kids, really great. Again, simple materials lists that people might have laying around or can easily get from the storm. Um, and then, you know, in-depth procedures, links to related articles to really have kids dig deeper uh, as well. Uh, within eBooks, uh, a lot of the books have kind of activities built into them, but then specifically there is a crafts and activities category, uh, some brain teaser type of books, uh, some cooking type of books, uh, you know, more art project type of books as well. So you can use, uh, find some great stuff in eBooks as well. Uh, early learning also has activities. Um, so this is gonna be, again, for kind of your preschoolers, maybe into kindergarten. Uh, there are both online activities and then activities that can be printed off and done offline uh, within that site. Early learning kids and student have educational games built in. Uh, so obviously different grade levels uh, targeting different ages of students uh, with those games. And then, as I mentioned, activity corner, thousands of, of activity ideas there and then dramatic learning. Uh, Obviously you have the plays. If you have enough kids to do the play within your own family, you can do that, or you can uh, you know, find the activities and, and projects that go along with those as well. All right, so let's jump in here um, into the databases live. Um, we're gonna pop around a little bit but I wanna start just with our youngest uh, early learning database here and point out a couple of cool features. Uh, you know, obviously, as I mentioned, this is our youngest database uh, for your preschool age, maybe into kindergarten, uh, really for pre-emergent readers. So a lot of things here to support students as they're learning how to read, as they're just starting out in school um, and so on. And so, one of the great things about this site is that students can find content in a variety of ways. So a lot of times, you know, your youngest students are going to be just coming on, clicking around, scrolling through, clicking on things that look interesting to them. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily coming on to do a search or, or to do something specific like that. Um, so this is more kind of exploratory for, for that age. So all types of content here, stories, videos, games, um, and as I mentioned, those activities, uh, you can see it's very visual. We have 
you know, icons to go along with these images. They're animated, they're fun, they're colorful. And then another support that's in place to help your pre-emergent readers navigate this site is the read aloud functionality. Uh, so all sites have the read aloud functionality in some capacity, um, but here on early learning, the entire site has read aloud functionality. So you'll see this blue speaker icon in the top right corner. Anything that a student hovers over then is going to read aloud to them. Let me make sure my sound is up here. Activities, tough trucks, good water bugs, lightning during a thunderstorm, more videos, mute. So I'm gonna turn that off so it's not talking over me the whole time, but really great support for, again, your pre-emergent readers going onto this site, navigating it on their own, uh, being able to explore without needing an adult um, with them to uh, you know, access that content and, and, and look around and, and find cool things. Um, so then again, as I mentioned, multiple ways in, you can click into uh, one of those main topics across the top, we call these content worlds. And then you're gonna see everything in there, any type of content that's related to that topic uh, within then that content world. And you can click in that way. Or if a student comes on, they know they want to play a game, they can click on the games icon up here, and then everything that they see will be a game or a video or an activity or a story, etc. Um, so I was talking about this four types of games um, on early learning, both educational as well as some that are just more for fun. Um, these are probably the most popular games here on early learning, uh, the tracing games helping students learn to write letters, numbers, short words. Uh, I'm gonna open here just so I can show you. This works especially great on a phone or a tablet, uh, but also works uh, on a computer as well as, as I am here. H. We can see it read out um, that letter, and then I can see the numbers, the lines on how to write that. <laughs> You know, if I'm stuck, it, the finger will appear to show me where to draw that line. And then I'll see, I'm turn that down a little bit. Uh, then I'll see a word, um, you know, this, these are animal themed. Uh, so I'm seeing H for hedgehog, see the animal, and then I can move on I. to the next letter. Uh, so, Fun tool, you heard the music, you know, it's colorful, animated, um, so on. Um, so tons of great games there as well. Um, mentioned the activities. We have this print and do category with just hundreds of activities. Uh, mazes, connect the dots, um, spot the differences, all these types of games. And these are all downloadable and you could print those out. Uh, so keeping students busy, um, you know, fun activities, number recognition, memory type things, uh, really targeting that, that younger student. And then we have uh, digital activities, uh, paint by number and coloring. So kind of mess free art activities uh, within paint by number as well. There's some more math related paint by numbers, so students have to solve the problem in order to figure out what color goes there. So, lots of great things for your young, youngest students. Um, I do wanna show one more thing and that's within early learning basics. Uh, not gonna go into every aspect of early learning basics, but basically uh, the idea here is a section of the site that's even more pared down to just work on the foundational skills. So you have uh, fun with words, it's going to work on letters, numbers, you have count and play, oops, sorry, fun with words, it's going to work on letters and word words, count and play that works on numbers and basic math skills. Uh, and then once upon a time and welcome to reading are both going to help with uh, building those, those reading skills. Uh, so what I wanted to show you was welcome to reading. 
Uh, this was, it still is, a world book print series. Uh, so these are 48 books uh, kind of leveled off in order. Uh, I grew up reading the Bob books, um, so I always kind of compare it to that um, in that, you know, there's sets of books that build upon each other, help a student learn how to read, uh, building those phonics and comprehension reading skills. Uh, and so this is a print set that World Book has then made digital as well here on early learning. So there's 48 books divided into four levels here, 12 books within each of those levels, uh, and each one gets progressively a little bit more difficult. Um, so you know, you're seeing the book here, short sentences, uh, simpler word choice, can scroll through this. You still see that read aloud functionality. It's going to highlight word by word. Winter is fun. We play in the snow. As it reads, uh, and then you flip through the book. Oops. Hide that. And when you get to the end of the book, it's going to prompt students to go into the next book. So then that's going to be the next level up. We're going to slowly be taking uh, baby steps up in learning how to read with all of these books. Another great feature, uh, you know, for educators or for parents homeschooling or just trying to support uh, their young students with reading, each one of these books comes with a lesson plan. So you see that icon in the top right corner there. And you'll see all 48 of those texts. You can click read to read it digitally. You can click foldable book uh, to get a printable version of the book print that out, fold it up, staple it together, and have a print copy of the book. Um, or you can click lesson plan and get the lesson plan here. Uh, within the lesson plan, you'll also find instructions for printing and folding the book. Uh, so if that looked complicated as I was scrolling, uh, there are instructions for that. Uh, but within the lesson plan, you'll see the lexile measure, the reading level, uh, phonics, vocabulary, comprehension, as well as discussion ideas, uh, classroom activity ideas, or activities parents can do at home, uh, connections to nursery rhymes and songs, and then connections to writing, um, practicing writing letters, short words, uh, things like that. So really rounding out uh, the book and, and making a full lesson out of that. Uh, so as I mentioned, each one of those texts has that lesson plan. So pretty awesome feature there. And that is early learning. I could spend uh, tons more time here, but I want to make sure to move around all the databases, show you different things. Uh, but before I leave early learning, are there any questions? All right. Um, cool. So then uh, within any database, if you wanted to switch to another one, the easiest way to do that is going to be to scroll all the way to the bottom. You're going to see the same footer on every single database. Uh, you'll see a button that says your resources and you'll see all nine of your uh, subscribed to databases as well as World Book Home. Uh, so to take you back to that uh, what we call our super home page. So I'm going to jump up a level. So from early learning, um, next grade level set up would be World Book Kids. Uh, so really targeting your elementary student. Uh, you'll notice here we now have a search box. We have an explore button as well. That's kind of your browse feature. And so a little bit more uh, research tools built into this site uh, than for early learning. So early learning was really targeting your pre-emergent readers, helping them build those reading skills, uh, kind of finding content by just browsing around, navigating around uh, by you know fun icons and colors. Here is going to be more targeted, uh, more of a search or again that explore. And that's going to be by a browse by category. The search box is predictive. 
So if students start to type, they're not sure how to spell, they're gonna see that text uh, pop up there. We'll go with this one, dinosaur. So when students conduct a search, they're gonna see encyclopedia articles first, uh, but then depending on the topic that they searched for, uh, they may see pictures, videos, and then maybe maps as well. Again, depending on what they searched for, and they can toggle over to those types of content as well. All right, so clicking into this article here, I uh, want to point out a couple of great tools for just helping students access the content, uh, you know, making it accessible to everyone, all the different tools, modifications, uh, supports that are built in. Uh, so overall, you're seeing kind of a uh, big, colorful image uh, with the hopes of drawing students in, um, getting them interested. And then you'll see the article down below. Still have the read aloud functionality. That's a great support tool. The dinosaurs were prehistoric reptiles that dominated Earth for about 160 million years. Still highlighting word by word as that goes through. Uh, there is a double-click dictionary as well. So if you double-click on a word in the text, uh, the definition will pop up right over the top. Really awesome tool. They don't have to open a new tab. They don't have to find a dictionary. Uh, they can just double-click the word, grab the definition, close out, and keep on reading where they left off. Um, up at the top, you're gonna see uh, three tabs to the left, uh, well, four with the article tab, and then two to the right. So on the right side, you'll see a table of contents. Um, on World Book Kids, the articles are relatively short. Uh, so you might only see like one or two, maybe three sections here. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, these sites build on each other, kids to student to advanced. Um, so all of the kind of formatting that's here, will exist on those sites as well. So it's just to get students comfortable with that. Um, with student and advanced, the articles will get longer. There'll be more sections within those as well, uh, within those article contents. Uh, but next to that, you have the tools menu. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when we were talking about how can students stay organized, uh, you have those save options. So saving to Google Drive, saving to OneDrive, can also just download the article as a PDF to your desktop and, and do that that way. Um, then there's share, a really easy way to share to Google Classroom. You know, that's a tool that a lot of uh, educators use. Um, so great way for them to share content with their students or for students to uh, share content with their classes as well. And then also sharing via email. I can do from there. Uh, you can get a printer friendly version of the article from the tools menu. You can grab those citations. As I mentioned, um, all of the content within WorldBook has a citation built in. Uh, so this is the article citation. I'll show you where you could find like an image citation as well. Uh, you might be thinking, why does an elementary student need a citation? Uh, they probably don't. But again, for continuity with the other sites, students will know where to find that. Uh, as they level up, as they move up in, in their grade levels as well. Really awesome tool, particularly for you all who are spread all around the world. You can translate the text into 103 different languages here. Uh, let's go with Spanish just to keep it simple. Uh, that's going to translate the article. You're going to see the same images, uh, the text. A lot of the languages maintain the read aloud functionality as well. Los dinosaurios eran reptiles prehistóricos que dominaron la tierra durante unos 160 millones de años. Um, so, great way to support uh, you know, English language learners or just, you know, maybe students um, and their families are living in a different country and they want to be more exposed to that language as well. 103 languages available um, to really get that content. Again, read aloud functionality on a lot of the languages as well. So love that feature, that's great. Um, and then you'll also see the read aloud settings. Uh, you can adjust the voice 
Uh, so different, lots of different options here, different genders, accents uh, to alter the voice and as well as the speed of the voice. Um, on the other side, as I mentioned, you'll have three additional tabs to the article. Uh, first is curriculum standards. Uh, this is going to pull up all of the uh, standards that are aligned to this specific article. Um, so you can find any state standards, uh, international standards, Common Core, uh, just to make sure the content that uh, students are accessing aligns to, you know, the standards that they're working on in school or if a teacher's looking for content, that's a particularly great uh, educator tool, awesome homeschooling uh, tool as well. Um, under that, you'll see the Lexile measure reading level of the article. Uh, this tab, curriculum standards and more information, they're essentially the same tab, <laughs> um, but the more information is going to show uh, links to related articles, uh, links to external websites that are related, uh, and then any content within the site that's related as well. So maybe games, activities, science projects, again, depending on the topic that you choose. And then the last tab, pictures, videos, and more, this is going to compile all of the media from throughout the article all together into one place. Great for visual learners, great for students that need, uh, you know, uh, just an image for a project or a poster or presentation, uh, easy way to find that as well. And as I mentioned, uh, I wanted to show you where you can find citations for, for media. Uh, if you click on an image, you're going to see a blue icon, a blue arrow icon in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, you'll see the option to print or cite. So you can grab the citation for the image as well. All right, so great research tool there. Um, you know, as I've said a couple of times now, student and advanced build on kids. So the content is, uh, you know, more advanced, uh, longer articles, more complicated word choice, you know, moving up with students as they move through school. Uh, so when we go into student uh, and advanced, we won't go into an article uh, just because the content that's there differs, but the formatting and all the tools that I'd be showing you are the same as what we just saw in kids. Uh, so just wanted to show you an, uh, what a World Book article looks like and, and what tools uh, go along with that. Uh, other features that I wanted to show you, some cool or unexpected features here. Um, I mentioned them when I was talking about the presentation, looking for activities or, or things to do at home with students. Uh, and I mentioned the activities and the science project features. Um, so these are gonna see all sorts of different categories. Uh, both of these features, again, are formatted uh, very similarly, just science is going to be more science project based activities and then activities are going to cover, you know, all your other categories. So here you can see within each science project category, there are lots of different projects. Uh, great if a student needs some ideas for science fair uh, or again, homeschooling, uh, these are great, great activity ideas. See the materials list, as I mentioned a couple of times, most of the activities or, or science projects on kids here have relatively simple materials lists, things that you might have laying around the house or, or can easily get from the store. So you'll see the materials list, you'll see an introduction, links to related world book articles, still seeing that read aloud functionality you had within an article, uh, and then you'll see the procedures down below. So a lot of them will have uh, PDFs, uh, activity sheets to go along with it, and then, you know, all of those instructions, procedures for the activity. Um, so again, science projects and then activities are going to cover your other categories, um, you know, food fun, work, art, craft, doodle and design, writing activities, music activities. Uh, so Lots of different ones here, and these are formatted uh, very similarly. Materials list, introduction procedures. So those are awesome to share um, with parents that are homeschooling, with parents that are looking for other activities to do at home with their kids as well. 
I also wanted to show uh, some compare and contrast tools. Uh, so down here, world of animals and compare places. These are really great kind of alternative ways to get information. So rather than reading an article, you can come here and uh, kind of get quick facts about either a place um, in compare places or an animal in world of animals. And then you can compare two side by side. And so we're here in uh, compare places. Uh, so we can compare states, provinces, countries, continents, uh, or I can click compare everything. I can click on a country and click explore. I'll see all of these quick facts about that place listed out, uh, related photos, audios, links, etc. I can also click in view the article itself. And then I can select a second country as well. Again, explore it or view the article, or I can compare them side by side. And so I'm going to see all of those quick facts listed side by side. I'll see a little visual representation of the numerical values here. You know, elevation, life expectancy, etc. Uh, so kind of a cool comparison tool, as well as, again, as I mentioned, an alternate way to get those quick facts to get that information. Rather than reading the article and pulling out these facts, uh, they're already listed uh, right there uh, for students. Uh, so really like that tool. And again, again, uh, World of Animals functions exactly the same. Uh, you'd just be comparing animals instead of places. Uh, one last uh, thing that I want to show you here is the important people feature. Uh, we found that a lot of research that's done at the elementary level is related to uh, biographies or uh, you know living history type projects. So this is a great place for students to come and, and find biographical content. So they can search by a person's name, they can search by a job title, uh, or they can browse again by those job titles, different achievements uh, down below. Once they select a job, then they can also add additional filters, male or female, country of cultural heritage, time period, uh, and get all of those results down below. Uh, so just that one really useful tool uh, for a lot of the type of research uh, that students might be doing at the elementary level. All right, I'm going to jump next into student, but I'm going to pause for questions. OK, so student then uh, takes a step up. This is going to be targeting your middle school age students, uh, maybe even upper elementary age as well. Um, you can already tell from looking at it, it's designed for an older student, a um, little bit more targeted around that search box, but then you'll see some, some features highlighted on the home page there, um, and then all the other features uh, tucked away into this main menu here up in the top right corner. As I mentioned, won't go into an article because uh, it's very similar to what we saw in kids, just with more content, higher reading level, etc. But I do want to show a couple other features. Uh, first one being our first kind of highlighted feature here. Uh, this is our current events tool, current events behind the headlines. Uh, World Book editors will take uh, current events in the news, uh, usually one a day, but not, not always every day. Uh, it's maybe every other day. Uh, and summarize them for the middle school reader, as well as linking related World Book articles um, into the summary. Um, so, you know, Paralympic Games just started, so this is a summary of that current event, and you can see throughout the article all of these links to related encyclopedia articles. So if a student wanted to dig deeper, they wanted to learn more about you know, all these related topics, they can click in uh, right from here. 
So this is a really cool tool. Obviously, students can stay up to date on those current events, uh, but then you can also come in here and search archived stories. Uh, if a, a homeschool uh, parent or an educator wanted to come in here and find content related uh, to a topic that they're talking about, even if it isn't like a super current event, it's just a past piece of news, you can come in, you can search, you can uh, browse by topic as well, uh, or you can search the archives by date. So maybe you're focused on a specific year and you want to go back and, and find something from, from that year, you can do that as well. Yeah, so pretty cool current events tool there. Okay, I lied a little bit because <laughs> we are going to actually go into an article, but uh, we're going to go for, because I want to show you the games that exist on student. Um, the games on, on early learning and on kids are uh, world book created games. They're built right into the database. On student, we partnered with uh, Legends of Learning, which is an external, obviously, from world book site that creates uh, science and math related educational games. Uh, so with these, with these games, you're going to find them linked to science or math related articles. Um, and you're going to see it just listed right within the article, just like any other image or media that you would see within the article, you'd see it uh, right there along the side. And then that's going to take students uh, outside of World Book, but into Legends of Learning. Uh, these are standards aligned. Uh, math and science games. They're musical, they're colorful, uh, and most importantly, they are educational. They're great supplements to lessons to, you know, put some application on, on some of the topics uh, that students might be learning about or learn about those topics uh, through kind of a gamified method as well. Uh, when we jump onto our training guide uh, in a little bit, I'll show you we also have, uh, we have a spreadsheet uh, list of all these games that are available. Uh, so rather than just stumbling upon them within an article, uh, we have a list to, to show you exactly where those are. And that list also comes with uh, pre and post game questions, vocabulary words. Um, it tells you what standards they're aligned to as well. So really being purposeful about uh, incorporating these, you know, into the classroom or into the homeschool environment. All right, and then while we're here on student, I uh, wanted to show you the web quests. Uh, didn't show them to you on kids, but they also exist on kids and they also exist on advanced. So um, all three sites have this button up here, educator tools. Uh, lots of different things in here. Uh, I guess I'll point them out while I'm in here. Curriculum correlations is going to be a standard search tool. So again, really helpful for educators as well as uh, homeschool educators. Uh, you can select your set of standard, uh, grade level, uh, subject area, and it's going to filter through all the content on World Book Student. Might take a minute because uh, it's it's searching through a lot of content here, and then it's going to pull up those standards which we had, there we go. Um, and then if WorldBook has something that is aligned to that standard, uh, you'll see a link along with the standard materials correlated. You can click there uh, and find the content that's aligned uh, to that specific standard. Uh, so really helpful educator tool there, as well as a couple others, graphic organizers, um, etc. But I wanted to show you uh, web quests. These are uh, kind of print and do activities designed to build foundational knowledge about different topics. Uh, so each database has a research skills web quest. Uh, so kids, student, and advanced all have one of these. These are to help students learn their way around the database. What tools are there for me? How can I conduct a search? Uh, what will I find within an article? what other types of content are there, um, what other features, what other tools. Uh, so really helping students, if they've never used the database, uh, learn that database and navigate around it. And then tons of other web quests uh, spanning all sorts of different categories, 
you know, main subject areas as well as then subtopics. Lots of different web quests here. And these will tell students, you know, what to search for um, and then give them questions to look for uh, while reading those articles. So great activities, uh, whether in a school classroom or in a homeschool classroom. You know, activities to, as well as then uh, questions and then answer keys at the end as well for the teacher. Um, and so the great thing then as well about these being on kids, student and advanced is that a lot of the topics that you're that you see here are on all three sites. Uh, but then just like the three sites are at different levels, the web quests are at different levels as well. So it kind of provides some differentiation, some different levels of difficulty for students, uh, for teachers that want to use this with their students. Uh, but you know they have some students that are uh, maybe need a little bit more support students that maybe need a little bit more of a challenge they can uh, operate on on different levels they can use different level web quests so uh, some students can use the kids version of the space exploration and some can use student and maybe you have a couple that are ready for the advanced version as well uh, so some kind of built-in differentiation there as well uh, to make everything even easier for the educator. All right, I'm going to leave World Book Student, but I want to pause again for questions. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, kids, student, advanced are really kind of our three core databases. Um, Discover is also mixed in there. Discover is our differentiated database. Uh, this is going to be designed for older uh, students or adults. Um, you know, maybe your English language learners, your uh, students with diverse needs, uh, adult literacy students. Uh, it's going to have content that's written at the same level as World Book Kids, so more of an elementary reading level, but then it's going to have all of the research tools that you would see on student and advanced. So still for an older student, just with a lower reading level in the articles themselves. But what I wanted to point out here was the Life Skills Center. Uh, these are uh, articles that still have all of the great tools and features of a world book article, the read aloud, uh, the double click dictionary, the translation tools, uh, but covering, you know, adulting kind of topics. There we go. Let me get that to open up. So you know you're getting it within a safe environment here. There's no ads. There's no, and no bias built into any of these articles. Uh, just some reliable information, again, about those kind of adulting topics. Uh, so definitely that's a benefit. And then second benefit, um, all of those tools that I mentioned. So uh, the read aloud, the save tools, the translate, double click dictionary, all of that. Uh, so really supporting students in every aspect of their learning. So not just, you know, uh, academic research, but then uh, some uh, life skills as well here. So really just wanted to show you that in Discover, uh, the articles themselves, uh, all these other tools are things that we have on the on our other sites as well. Uh, so yeah, that is Discover. I want to jump next into timelines just for a minute or two. And World Book Timelines, as I mentioned at the very beginning, this is our chronological database. Everything is shown in timeline format. Uh, World Book has over 650 pre-created timelines. You can see all these different categories here. You'll see featured timelines. You can also search if you'd like. And then these timelines are interactive. So you can zoom in and out. You'll see the different events kind of adjust to fit your screen, to fit uh, the time frame that you've zoomed in and out on as well. You can click on an event 
can see the related media, any other descriptions or text that goes along with it. Scroll through all of the content this way as well. And then what's really awesome about timelines is that it's customizable. You can make it your own. Uh, you can edit timelines. You can add your own events. You can create your own timelines from scratch as well. Um, so when you click edit on an existing timeline, an existing event, you can add your own notes. You can color code the event. You can add your own media, et cetera. As you can see, I just color coded that event there. I can add my own events. Uh, so I can search World Books database of events. There's going to be over 14,000 individual events uh, to search through. Or if I'm doing external research, I can create my own event uh, from scratch. Uh, and then I can save the timeline, I can share it, uh, etc. I'm not going to save this one. <laughs> But I will go then into my timelines. This is any timelines that you've edited, that you've created and saved, that you'll find here in my timelines. Lots of different creative ways that this can be used that we've heard uh, educators, parents, students using it for. Uh, you know, we've heard English teachers that use it for daily writing prompts as a reading log. Um, you can use it for current events. You could use it to track project-based learning or group projects um, and so on. So, again, tons of different ways to use this here, uh, both for as a research aspect to find the world book created timelines and, and see history shown in that format, or again, creating your own timeline. You can just cre click create a timeline, start from scratch, uh, and then add your own events to that as well. So love this tool. I think there's a lot of versatility um, and a lot of flexibility and a lot of cool ways that that timelines can be used as well. And the last one I want to go into for today is ebooks, uh, just really briefly, because I do want to show you the training guide as well before we before we depart. <laughs> um, but here on ebooks, you're going to see hundreds of different books uh, in ebook format, obviously, as well. Um, so you're seeing all these different categories. I'm here on the all page, uh, but you could see all the different categories above as well. You know, I mentioned the crafts and activities category. Uh, just all different things. Again, both uh, kind of reading for fun as well as more textbook style uh, texts here. Opening up the book here in the e-reader. Oh, great. I've already annotated this one. Uh, so this is a great page. You can see here I have I have the ability to interact with the book uh, to add annotations. So I've highlighted, I've uh, circled, I've added a note here. And some of the books as well, again, one of the great benefits of an e-book is this one has a built-in video to the to the book, so I can open that up. There are 10 pyramids at Giza, including three of the largest and best preserved of all Egyptian pyramids. Each pyramid was... So that's pretty cool, that uh, feature you wouldn't get in a print book. Uh, but all these tools that I mentioned here, uh, the pen, the highlight, the note, are going to exist along the left-hand side here. Uh, so with the pen, I have different colors. I can change the thickness. I can add those sticky notes. I can do the highlight uh, within the page as well. And then another great benefit to an ebook is the search tool. Um, so I can oops, search throughout the text. It's going to show me everywhere that my term is mentioned throughout this book. Uh, it's a book on Egypt, so obviously it's mentioned a lot of times, but then I can click there, jump straight to that page, and I'm going to see my term highlighted within the text itself. Some ac accessibility tools here on ebooks. You can zoom in and out on the pages. You can have it uh, fit the width or the height of your screen. You can view it as a single page. Uh, or as a traditional print book as a double page. And you can view 
the thumbnails as well, just to help you navigate throughout the book, uh, find what you're looking for, and so on. All right, does that want to load? Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, so again, hundreds of different uh, books here. Again, books for fun, books to support the curriculum, lots of different topics. So that is eBooks. And then with our last couple of minutes, I do want to leave a couple minutes for questions, but I also want to jump you in really quickly to our training guide where you can find tons of great support materials. Uh, the training guide is linked uh, from that super homepage, training and support, um, or as I mentioned, every database has the same footer. Any page that you're on, you can see that at the bottom. You can click training and support and click into our training guide uh, from there. So many great resources here. I could spend a half an hour just on the training guide <laughs> itself, uh, but I only have a couple minutes left, so I'm going to uh, run you through some of uh, some of the highlights here. As I mentioned, support-wise, how-to articles, video tutorials, these are going to be broken out by product and then by feature within the product. So if there's something you wanted to know more about today that I didn't go as in-depth into or I didn't go into at all, uh, you can learn more about those from the how-to articles or in video tut uh, tutorial format. So again, broken out by product and then by feature within those products. Uh, all the video tutorials, relatively short, uh, just a quick walkthrough of, of what's available. You can also scroll down to our products. Um, you know, if you know, well, I really only work with um, you know, youngest students, you could go into and find everything related to early learning. I did wanna show you where you could find that spreadsheet of games. Uh, so that you could find here under our products, under student. And then you'll see it linked under the features section. Um, so first bullet point right there, math and science games appear in relevant articles. Uh, you can click for that complete list of games. And so you can see all the games that are available. Quick link right to the article itself. As I mentioned, uh, standards tags, uh, topic descriptions, vocabulary words, uh, pre-game, post-game discussion questions. Uh, so kind of already talked about that spreadsheet, but that's where you can find that. Oops. Um, is right under that student section in the features on, on that first bullet point. Um, complimentary training. We run public webinars um, weekly, uh, sometimes twice a week. Uh, so if there's any topic that interests you, uh, you are welcome to join us at any time for, for our public webinars. They are at a set time. I know you guys are all around the world, um, but these, if you register ahead of time, it will send you a recording afterwards automatically, even if you can't uh, make it live. So lots of great topics there. And then last thing, I know I'm, I'm right at time here. Uh, last thing I want to show you is this green button here, the free material. This is what I mentioned at the beginning, uh, promoting world book, findings, uh, learning resources, support resources. So there's posters, social media posts, bookmarks, things that you can print out and, and or send out via email, uh, however uh, you operate there. Uh, lots of great promo promotional material. And then under that, learning resources. So there's one pagers for teaching topics, uh, different ideas for, uh, for different topics for teachers or homeschool teachers. Um, resources to go along with some of our eBooks. Um, distance learning ideas, we put this together last March, March 2020 when the pandemic first started. Didn't think it would still be as relevant today, but you know, here we are. <laughs> um, so these are all lesson ideas. A lot of them say uh, lesson ideas for at home for parents, uh, but could also be used, uh, educators could incorporate those into the classroom as well. Um, so just one or two pages with some different lesson ideas, kind of highlighting different features within each database, uh, ways that you can incorporate those into a full lesson or a full project. 
So tons of different ideas there as well. Um, and then educator starter kits, last thing, I know I'm a, a minute over here, but uh, these are great for anyone, you know, that's just getting started with World Book. Um, you know, if you have someone you know that works with elementary students and doesn't know about uh, World Book Kids, you could send them this starter kit. It's going to link all these great resources, both on the training guide, as well as within World Book Kids itself. Uh, you know, some lesson ideas, some different tips and tools uh, within World Book Kids. And there's one for, for each um, kind of of our main products there. Okay, so with that, I don't wanna go too far over. Um, I, again, I'm going to put this presentation in the chat in just a second here, uh, but a lot of what I just talked about, there's a slide for as well. And then there's my contact information. So while I'm sharing this, um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, come off mute and ask those. Where is the chat here? We have them in the chat, and the question was, where do we find social media and promotional images? Perfect. Yeah, so I, I did, I think, just answer that in the last couple of seconds, but um, again, back on that training guide. Um, so I'll actually even take it back further here. Um, if you get, oops. <laughs> okay, hold on. We're gonna just go to my bookmarks. <laughs> um, when you get logged into WorldBook online, you get brought to this homepage. Top right corner, training and support is going to take you to the WorldBook training guide. And then you can find that big green button, uh, free material. Um, so you'll see that the first one under spread the word, all of this promotional material, that first one is our social media posts theme specific, uh, product specific as well. If you wanted to promote a, a specific product and then uh, feature specific as well. So if you wanted to promote a specific uh, tool within a database, you can do that as well. And then some just general uh, world book ones. So lots of ones there. Uh, these are just, um, you know, you can just go in, um, save the image and, and then share that out in, in whatever way um, you want, you wish. Uh, but yeah, so that was, again, a big green button on the training guide, free material, and then all those buttons at the very top uh, are the promotional material. And another question is, are there any reproduction restrictions? So uh, all we ask is if students are using uh, like an image or something from WorldBook, like in the classroom, that's fine. They don't have, there's no reproduction restrictions on that. We do ask that if you are, uh, like if a teacher is, is using it for a resource or, or sharing that out, or if you're sharing it out in you know, any kind of, communications, newsletters, emails, whatever, just to cite uh, cite your sources. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. Um, nothing super crazy on that. I do also have, let's see if I can, not sure that I can. So I'm going to I'll, I'm going to send this to Anne because I don't think I can attach a file in this meeting, um, but I put together uh, one other document here uh, called Recommendations by Topic. Uh, and this just kind of goes through a lot of different uh, things, needs that students might have, that educators might have, um, and then tells you which database you can use. Uh, which feature within those databases as well. Um, and this has been edited to only include uh, the databases that you have in your subscription, uh, obviously, as well. So pretty lengthy document. We got seven pages worth of topics here and, and different features for that as well. So I will send this uh, to Anne and then, and then 
maybe she can get that to everyone, uh, but I won't not able to attach that at the moment. Uh, but yeah, so I shared the presentation, I believe, yeah, in the chat. But if anyone has any other questions at any time, you can feel free to email me, training at worldbook.com. Uh, or again, there's the link to that training guide, uh, as I was mentioning, with all of those, those resources uh, to kind of go through and, and explore yourself. <laughs>